I know what you're thinking. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, oh no, I uh, think we're missing a couple of episodes. I really contemplated putting this video out here and exposing myself like this, especially when you guys barely know anything about me, yet here I am suddenly revealing something so personal. But then I realized... I don't want to have to feel ashamed for having been in psychiatric care or having mental illness because I definitely wouldn't want anyone else out there to feel like they should be judged negatively for it either. Not a lot of people talk about it because everyone wants to keep good vibes and nobody wants to be the Debbie Downer. But so many people don't even realize how common it is and how many people around you are actually also on medications or going to therapy. We're all human, we're all imperfect, but that doesn't define our worth and most importantly, doesn't mean we're defective or incapable of doing great things. With all that being said, this isn't going to be a video of me getting into all my feels, talking about how I ended up in the psych ward, and all the messy drama behind it. This is going to be more of a lighthearted story about something kinda mean I did to my roommate when I was in the psych ward. So in the psych unit, I was on what you call a 72 hour hold. Meaning I have no choice but to be held in this hospital for three days because I was a danger to myself. But I had to stay a little longer because of complications with my living situation. But while I was there, I had a double room all to myself, which I loved because I like to be alone when I'm sad. And I also liked how this unit allowed us to close the door of the room, which I think some psych wards don't allow. They did have to pop in every so often to make sure we weren't trying to, you know, unalive ourselves. But being enclosed and isolated still made me feel really safe. In the morning, however, my little isolation vacation sadly ended when a nurse walked in with my new roommate. We'll call this roommate Jenny. So Jenny was a young Armenian girl around my age who suffered from severe paranoia, depression, and anxiety. Apparently, Jenny forgot to take her medications that day, became disoriented and paranoid about dying from COVID, drove herself to an ER where she had a meltdown because they didn't want to give her the COVID vaccine, which didn't even exist at the time, and as a result, got admitted to psychiatric care. Hey, I'm Jenny. Uh, hi, I'm Hono. Nice to meet you. Huh, what is someone like you doing here? You don't look like you do drugs. <laughs> yeah, no. Jenny was kind of weird at first, not gonna lie, but I was just happy to have a roommate that wasn't trying to hurt me or kill me like this other patient that was there. <laughs> Jenny also talked a lot about how she really wanted to keep in touch with me, be my friend, and invite me over to her house so she can feed me Armenian pastries. So I thought she was a good person at first. She also would watch TV or eat snack in the activity room with me. She followed me around a lot and I was fine with it. I didn't have a problem until her behavior started becoming a bit unsettling. If I wasn't with her, her paranoia would kick in and she would frantically search the unit until she found me. And sometimes it scared the shit out of me, especially during this one time where I decided to take a walk through the halls before bedtime and the lights were dimmed because everyone was already getting ready to go to sleep and when I was turning a corner she just appeared out of nowhere standing there apparently waiting for me as she said I really like you I wish you could stay here with me longer <laughs> From that point onward, I started being really uncomfortable around her and those feelings only got worse when she started being really racist. She had a habit of repeating herself over and over so she would constantly keep reminding me how much she hated black people and was glad that I wasn't black because she thought that they smelled bad. Okay, no. Okay, that's... That's really fucked up. That's not okay. But it's true. No, no, it's not. I'm gonna leave. She would also act annoyingly cautious around the black patients in our unit. So the fact that she was a hateful racist made me start to strongly dislike her. So like I said in the beginning, Jenny was admitted here because of her meltdown about COVID and her being mentally unstable from forgetting to take her meds. So she would constantly wake me up in the middle of the night freaking out. I, I can't breathe. My chest, it hurts. My heart is going to stop. I feel the COVID. I feel it in me. They don't want to help me or give me the COVID vaccine. They're here to kill us. They don't care about us. We're going, we're going to die. 
Jenny, Jenny, there is no COVID vaccine and you are not dying. We all had to test negative to be here. So please, just sleep and shut the fuck up. No, I know they have the vaccine, but they just won't give it to us. We're going to die. <laughs> type of person where if you disrupt my sleep in any way, I will become aggressive. Especially if I am sleep deprived. And just to give you guys an idea of how irritable and sleep deprived I was, before I was admitted to the psych unit, I was serving my 72 hour hold in the emergency of a different hospital. Because before you even get admitted to a psych ward, there's this whole process for the hospital to try and find a psych unit with an open vacancy for you. And for me, it took the full three days for them to find me an available room. So, while I was waiting in the ER those three days, I wasn't even put in a private room. I was sitting in a bed in an overcrowded hallway with a bunch of other psych patients waiting for placements with paramedics and nurses chaotically running all over the place the entire time. I didn't have my phone. I couldn't leave my bed unless to go to the bathroom because I was being monitored by a police officer. And obviously, I couldn't sleep in a constant loud and bright environment because they never dimmed the lights. So I had no sense of time those three days. And when I was eventually transported to the psych ward at four in the morning, I couldn't even sleep there because I was so overwhelmed by the check-in process. Before you enter the unit, they strip you naked and search you, empty out your bag in front of you, and basically take everything away from you. Your phone, your clothes, sometimes your shoes or your shoelaces, your piercings, and then they just give you a towel, a gown, a blanket, and socks. So, as you can imagine, I was under pretty severe stress for four days. And I'm not saying all this to justify what I'm about to say I did, but I just want you guys to know I wasn't stable, I wasn't thinking logically or morally, I was in fight mode and honestly Jenny was racist so tell me did she not have it coming for her tell me did she not deserve these hands so while Jenny was having her meltdown in the middle of the night I remembered this one time where the doctor gave Jenny a sedative injection in her butt cheek after a previous meltdown that knocked her out within half an hour so I had a little idea hey Jenny you know what maybe Maybe that bot shot you got the other day, maybe that was the COVID vaccine. Huh. Maybe, huh. I did feel better after they gave it to me. Should I go ask for it again? Yes! Uh, I mean, yes. <clears throat> I, I think it will make you feel better. And me. I know lying is bad. I know I was especially in the wrong for taking advantage of her paranoia to convince her to take a sedative in the guise of the COVID vaccine. But your girl was going through it. She just wanted to sleep. And the doctor obviously wouldn't have allowed the injection if it wasn't okay for her. She would have inevitably gotten the injection that night from how much she was freaking out. I just uh happened to encourage her to get it a little sooner. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, well, oh no, if the injection's good for Jenny, why, why is that bad then? Well, Jenny found out later that that injection was not the COVID vaccine, so she started freaking out because she didn't want it anymore, but the doctor was going to give her the injection anyways, so a bunch of nurses came in to hold Jenny down and they euthanized her. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they put her to sleep peacefully. The nurses also offered me melatonin to help me sleep, which I didn't know I could just ask for. So I happily took it and your girl had her first full night of proper sleep in almost a week. Ah! Oh my god, you guys, what? I'm almost at 100k, that's so wild. Thank you guys so much for enjoying my videos and leaving so many kind comments, you guys. It means so much to me. It makes me so happy. I want to celebrate by making a Q&A video. So if you guys have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. I'll also probably make a YouTube post or Twitter post. And you guys can leave your questions there. But other than that, that's it. Thank you guys so much again for watching and for always supporting me. It really, really, really means a lot to me. And yeah, I hope you guys are staying safe out there, being happy. I love you all. See you next time.